Arsenal will win the Premiership, in my opinion. They will win the league title. We saw yesterday a rivalry born. And what I mean by that is so much drama, so much action, goals, red cards, VAR moments, wonder saves. So many brilliant moments in that game, which for me, a rivalry was born. Arteta versus Pep, the apprentice versus the master. And I'm going to explain in this video why I think Arsenal will win the league, especially if Rodri's injury is a an ACL injury, which a lot of people fear it could, even if he's out for a few months. I thought Arsenal yesterday in that second half defended magnificently. And I don't necessarily think the criticism is justified. We're going to speak about both teams. Make sure you go down, hit that subscribe button. Nearly 300 new subscribers over the weekend. We are steamrolling our way towards 25,000 subscribers. Make sure you drop a like on the video if you haven't already. Yesterday's video hit over 1,500 likes, which is phenomenal. Now, this game yesterday, Manchester City got the early goal from Erling Haaland, in which he's been, he's been criticised heavily that he couldn't break down this Arsenal defence. And he finally did that. Fantastic first touch from Savinho, draws Calafuri out of position, an absolute dime, cuts that defence in half, and then he just has one touch. David Reyes anticipating he's going to go to the back post, and he just toe pokes it under his arm, makes it 1-0. And a lot of people thought City would go on and steamroll them. You're at the Etihad, and to be fair, the first 20 minutes, up until Rodri went off, City looked good. The minute Roger went off and the minute Erling Haaland got that goal, Arsenal changed their approach to the game. They cut out the wide areas. They stopped City playing out wide, which completely cuts out Phil Foden's game on that left-hand side. When he come on, he had to play more centrally. Savinho wasn't getting abundance of, um, of, of time on the ball after around the 25th minute. Timber did a good job. And I think defensively, Timber at the moment is one of the best defenders in the league right now. He is phenomenal. At defending. Um, forget that he didn't make a zero pass. He, he was just in that job to clear the ball. And that's what they did. Califuri then responds with a wonder goal. Absolutely phenomenal strike. Quality, quality goal. And then they go and get a set piece, which is just over the bar. And then they finally score again off of a set piece. Manchester City have scored 13 goals in the league. And 10 of those have been earned in Haaland. Now, as great as a goal scorer as Erling Haaland is, that for me is alarm bells. That for me is alarm bells. Arsenal have scored, um, I think they've scored, is it seven Premier League goals or eight Premier League goals? And they've had uh, Havertz on the score sheet. They've had Gabriel on the score sheet. They've had Trossard on the score sheet. Um, I believe they've had a few other players on the score sheet rather than just predominantly it being Erling Haaland. Uh, Kai Havert scored against Brighton. Gabriel scored against Spurs. Against Villa, it was Trossard uh, and Thomas Partey. They've had different goal scorers, which for me is a better way of playing because if you're so reliant on one player, we've seen this at Spurs with Harry Kane. If that player doesn't get service or doesn't have a good game, they struggle. Now, Manchester City have got world-class talent all over the pitch. But if Rodri is injured, he's the glue. He is the reason why they have, he, he, is, he scored the winner in the Champions League final. He scored the winner at the Emirates a few years ago. He's probably, he's not probably, he's the best defensive midfielder in the world. He's the most important player to any team in the Premier League. If he has got an ACL injury, that is huge. That opens up the title race, not just for only Arsenal to, to walk through, but to Liverpool potentially to creep in because they look very good. They've only conceded one goal in the Premier League so far which is a phenomenal defensive record. But I want to talk about Arsenal's last, um, the last month they've had, right? They've beaten Aston Villa 2-0 at um, Villa Park. They've drawn with Brighton, playing around 40 minutes with 10 men. They've gone and beaten Spurs. They've got a point at Atalanta and they've got a point at City. We're in September and they've played Tottenham, City and Villa away. Three notorious tough grounds for Manchester City. Yes, they won last season and they won there the season before, but it's always a tough game for them. 
Manchester City, they've already played their arch rivals without Odegaard and they played them for 10 men and defended for their lives. They've got the most informed goalkeeper in world football right now. David Raya is absolutely phenomenal. And you look at their upcoming fixtures with Leicester at home, Southampton at home, PSG at home, Bournemouth away. You know, they've got one away game up until November now. I personally think Arsenal will win the league now. I've seen enough of a mentality boost. I've seen enough from Arteta from his tactical prowess to change formation and go to a more defensive style of play. They've got multi, They've got people all over the pitch scoring goals. Their centre-backs are scoring goals. Their DM, their wide players, their strikers. Yes, they haven't scored as many goals as Manchester City. We know that. Manchester City have scored 13 goals in the league. But they've also conceded two more than Arsenal, four more than Liverpool. So their goal difference is, is they might have scored a lot more goals, but their goal difference is only one above a one. Sorry, it's actually behind Liverpool because of how strong their defense has been. And I think we've seen a difference in the mentality of these players. People are criticizing them and going, oh, you know, etc., etc., etc. You come in and you're playing for a point. What do you expect them to do? 54 minutes with 10 men at your arch Premier League rival for, for the title, your arch rival for the Premier League title, you're in their backyard and you've got 10 men. What other game plan do you expect Arteta to do? We've seen managers come out there when they've had a player sent off. Ange Postacoglu did this, Tottenham against Chelsea. We had not one but two men sent off, right? We completely um, got steamrolled by Chelsea. We saw it before where Liverpool had a couple of red cards against Tottenham and we scored at the death to nick it. But Liverpool made it incredibly hard for us and did exactly what Arsenal did and defended for their lives. There is zero... Anyone who thinks there's a different game plan, you're going to carry on playing the football with only, you know, 10 out, 9 outfield players. It's absolute madness. I don't think there is another approach that Arteta could have done. And he got a point. Yes, they were 30 seconds away from beating Manchester City. Yes, they were 30 seconds away from being top of the league. But they've played five, they've won three, they've drawn two. And the only games they've drawn is when they've been, been reduced to 10 men. We are going to drop a video about the VAR because there seems to be uh, an agenda against certain clubs. We are going to be, be speaking about that on another video. But I think there is more than enough in the tank this season for Arsenal to go and win the Premier League. I'm just being brutally honest. I think they've got enough consistency in their away performances. I actually think they play better away than they do at home. They've got the Champions League. They've got the League Cup. There's games coming thick and fast. Right, there is. Games coming thick and fast. I personally believe the way the way they keep playing right now, they are. Um, I think they're going to have a, a a really really good season. If they don't win a trophy, then you maybe have to ask questions on Arteta. You are going up against the greatest Premier League side that's ever assembled, in my opinion. And of course, they're in four competitions, but they've got a good run of games now up until November, and then November is another test. It's Newcastle United away. It's Inter Milan away. It's Chelsea away. Sporting away, West Ham away, Man United at home, Monaco at home. Um, but you you want to win the biggest trophies, you want to beat the best, you got to beat the best. You want to beat the best, you got to beat the best, sorry. Man City, on the other hand, I thought they were poor in the second half. I thought very wasteful. They, they I thought Pep made a number of mistakes. If you're going to play wingers, you've got to play out and out wingers. Doc is more a, of a kind of an inside forward. Savinho's a proper winger. Very techy, very skillful. Lovely first touch. And City have got games in which Wolves away, they haven't been fantastic at. Newcastle United's always a tough game for City. Last year, Kevin De Bruyne won the pass into Oscar Bob. They've got an easier run in the Champions League. They've got Sparta Pra and they've got Slavy and Bratislava. Then they've got Sporting, then they've got Feyenoord. I expect City to steamroll those teams in the Champions League and to steamroll majority of teams in the Premier League. Around November time where they've got Brighton, Spurs, Liverpool, um, we will kind of see what where they're made of. But in terms of if Rodri is out, that is literally a game changer 
for me. That is an absolute game changer because he is absolutely everything to them. He's the glue. He's the the kind of the player's coach in terms of he leads by example. His stats are absolutely ridiculous. I think he every game that he's played in out the last 50, they haven't lost. Um, and genuinely, I, th- I think he's an absolute phenomenal player. And if he is out, we'll have to wait and see. Even if it's out for two months, that's huge. And of course, Arsenal played Tottenham, Atalanta and Manchester City without Martin Odegaard. You would imagine Martin Odegaard now could be back by the PSG type, the PSG game or Southampton. That would give them a huge boost. You know, they're capped in. And I think the way they're dealing with games away from home now is they're just incredibly tough to beat. And that's through Arteta's tactics. You know, every, everyone's crucifying them saying, oh, it's a Jose, it's a Tony Pulis way. Jose Mourinho made a career out on this. Jose Mourinho beat Pep Guardiola's Barcelona side with his with that Inter Milan side. He schooled the greatest ever footballing side you will ever see. He schooled them. That is how you beat a Pep Guardiola side. If you go toe-to-toe with Arsenal, sorry, if you go toe-to-toe with City, you're never really going to come out on top. Tottenham have got a very good record playing Manchester City in the last 10 years. And the reason we've got a good record is because we counter-attack them and defend for our lives. Man Man City are not the sort of team that are going to defend for their lives. And Man City are not the sort of team that you can go toe-to-toe with because they've got so much talent. But Tottenham have beaten them you know, they've only won two games in our ground in the last seven or eight. And they've only won one in the Premier League. So in terms of in terms of how you approach the City game, I think I think they got it, they got it bang on the money. And bearing in mind they did it for 54, 55, 56 minutes with 10 men. Like what more? What more do you expect from you know from that Arsenal side? Let me know down below. Make sure you drop a like. Make sure you have subscribed. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching.